Batteries can be a really complicated purchase for a solar system since there are thousands of options with different amp hours, voltage, and different types. Here's some simple information. Well, more like complex information with some simple answers. First, think safety when you're working around and with batteries and any type of electrical stuff. Remove all your jewelry and you don't want to get electrocuted and have your watch like melt through your wrist. That would be no good. I don't really think at any point there's enough amperage to kill a healthy person. But I'm not a doctor, so assume doing something stupid will give you some stupid results. Now I know what you're thinking. Batteries are expensive. I just want to know which ones are the cheapest. Well, let me tell you, I think the batteries may be the most important thing that you spend money on in a solar system. Batteries are the limiting reagent in most of the systems. Now, to rephrase that, what you'll notice the most is battery capacity, or rather, lack thereof, when using your system. More solar panels make it charge quicker, but if you can only store a few hours of power in your batteries, then it doesn't help you too much on cloudy days. Batteries are measured in amp hours. More amp hours means you can run more things for longer. That one's pretty easy to grasp. As an example, my laptop takes 2.8 amps per hour. The Dometic fridge takes about 3 to 5 amps an hour. What I recommend doing is using an online solar calculator to estimate how many amp hours you would use daily. I suggest you purchase a battery with the greatest amp hour rating your budget allows. The batteries for my setup were the third most expensive thing in the entire van build, including the van. There are two popular battery types, and that's lead acid and lithium batteries. Let's go over lead acid first. The lead acid battery is made up of plates, lead, lead oxide, and various other elements which are used to change density, hardness, death crystals, etc. With 35% sulfuric acid and 65% water solution. Now this is called electrolyte. What are electrolytes? Do you even know? It's what they use to make Brondo. Yeah, but why do they use them to make Brondo? Now this all causes a chemical reaction that produces electrons. And that's the most science we get in this episode, so here's the more simple stuff. Lithium batteries. Now I don't know how lithium batteries work. Maybe the battery wizards that live inside get Red Bulls, maybe. The important thing to know about the lithium batteries is that they're better in almost every aspect. The best thing is the weight and the sizes are drastically smaller than traditional lead acid batteries. They also don't leak as far as I know. What's the drawback for this magical technology? Well, it's exponentially more expensive since it's a newer technology. If you have the money, you can opt for these. It wasn't really worth it for me. Now we'll pop back to lead acid batteries since that's what I went with. There's two main types of lead acid batteries. There's starting batteries and there's deep cycle batteries. Starting batteries deliver quick bursts of energy for, you guessed it, starting engines. The deep cycle is built for a long-term energy deliverer, and that's what you want for solar. Starting batteries should not be used for solar applications because all the internal plates inside of those can warp and break, probably won't explode, but like I said, I'm not a doctor, who knows. Let's uh, break it down a little bit more. A subset of lead acid batteries are wet cell, gel cell, an absorbed glass mat, which is AGM. I'll skip most of the technical stuff and just say that AGM batteries are the best, but they also cost about twice as much. There's two main reasons I highly suggest spending that extra money here. Number one, if you get a sealed AGM battery, there's no off-gassing of hydrogen. That's the biggest safety reason, really. Non-sealed batteries also need to be topped off by adding distilled water. This also means that they can't be laid on their side or mounted in any direction but exactly straight up. Reason number two, they're more efficient. For solar in a camper van, RV, and all that type of stuff, we want a 12 volt system since most of our appliances will be 12 volt themselves. I looked into buying 12 volt batteries only. If you want more than a single battery capacity, then you have to wire two or more of them together. Now, there are two ways to do that. You can wire them in series and parallel. If you wire them in series, like the picture, then you add the voltage of the batteries together. If you wire them in parallel, you add the amp hours together. In this case, we'll wire them in parallel to double the amps and keep the volts at 12. Warning! Don't mix the size and types of batteries. A 6 volt and a 12 volt battery should not be wired together. 
a 150 amp hour battery and a 20 amp hour battery should not be wired together. I wouldn't even suggest having different brands of the same battery type wired together. Stick with all the same stuff. Warning number two. Your charge controller should cut off power if you go below a certain charge in your batteries. My inverter goes straight to the batteries though, so I have to make sure I don't discharge my batteries too low. What is too low? Don't let your 12 volt system go lower than say like 10.5 volts at the minimum. Ideally don't let it get much lower than 11 volts. This will severely limit the lifespan of your batteries. Seems like a lot of work to monitor all this stuff and to make sure everything's perfect, but taking care of your batteries saves you a lot of trouble and more importantly, a lot of money in the long run. There's a crazy stat in the business that only 30% of batteries sold reach the 48 month mark and 80% of battery failure is related to uh, sulfuration buildup, which basically means the battery city sitting and doing nothing for long periods of time. This is one of those reasons why when you leave your car in the garage alone for a month, it can die. With a modern MPPT solar charge controller like we looked at in the last video, you can make specific settings to charge the specific battery you have. Make sure to select your battery type minus AGM slash gel battery in the setup options. Your controller and probably the battery will come with instructions and settings that you should put it to. Another thing to take note of is that super hot and super cold weather, as with all electrical things, also leads to battery failure. And of course, if you haven't read it on the batteries in this video by now, this is my final battery choice. Two 155 amp hour sealed AGM batteries. Now when wired in parallel is 310 amp hours at 12 volts. The link to the highest quality one I found is below. Now these are the batteries I got. They are heavy. They're about 100 pounds each. Yeah, the UPS guy delivering it had to bring out a special dolly to put uh, two of them in one box. It was crazy. With AGM batteries, you can turn them on their side. Normal batteries, you can't turn on them on their side because they'll leak, and you have to top them off. But to get them to fit, I had to turn them on their side because they're just not quite... The bed frame is a little too short.